If you want to publish your papers in top Scopus Index journals, you need to be able to tell a coherent story throughout your paper. And you might have heard from your supervisor or from journal reviewers that your paper lacks a story. But very few supervisors or journal reviewers, let alone, actually explain what that means. Because if you think about it, it's such a strange word to use, story. What does a story have to do with writing an academic paper? So if you've been a little bit confused by you know, that term and how to actually make your papers coherent so that you can get them to top journals in your field, then in this video, I'm going to explain step-by-step step how you can tell a coherent story throughout. Now, if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowak and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers write and publish research papers in top Scopus Index journals. So I'm going to give you six steps to telling a coherent story. But before I do that, let's first of all define what a coherent story in a paper actually means. Because when we hear the word story, well, we think about stories in movies, stories in cartoons perhaps, stories in books, but what does that have to do with writing a paper? And the problem is that most of the time I found in academia, neither supervisors, nor reviewers, uh, nor you know, very few academic courses actually explain what that means. So a coherent story basically means that throughout your paper, your paper is so well structured and everything is linked together so well that from start to finish, there is like a thread. So imagine, you know, a needle and a thread that, you know, goes through the entire paper, you know, and you can visualize that with, you know, one color of a thread, maybe a red thread, and that needle goes through the whole paper. So when the reviewer reads it from start to finish, it is clear what you're trying to tell the reader, what the, con the real key takeaway message of your paper is throughout. So that is what a coherent story actually is in an academic paper. And let me give you six strategies that you can use um, in order to build that coherent story. And you definitely want to stick around until the end because the sixth step is, I think, the most important one. And also at the end, I'll show you how you can get a much more in-depth guide into telling a coherent story, organizing your papers, structuring your research ideas in our free published researcher community. So definitely stick around until the end. So the first thing that you want to do is follow um, the principle of inverted pyramid. So what is the inverted pyramid principle? Well, imagine a pyramid that is inverted, where the pyramid apex is at the bottom. So basically the ideas go from general to specific. And this really applies to practically anything. It applies to how you organize the sections in your paper. It also applies how, to, how you organize uh, paragraphs. So if we look at sections, let's say if we look at the introduction and we apply the inverted pyramid model, well, typically an introduction will start with the importance of the topic, right? And then it will go into the literature review. So importance of the topic is very broad right and then literature review is a bit narrower and then we've got the research gap which is narrower still and then we've got the aim of the paper so that's the inverted pyramid principle in action in the introduction for example so that's the first tip that you want to implement in order to tell a coherent story and the second one is what i would call stepping stones so if we continue with sort of the the visual image of a pyramid and an inverted pyramid because i think just visualizing that will help you to understand you know what i'm talking about here and it will help you to implement it as well because you it will be clear in your mind so stepping stones are, you know if you think about the pyramid right most pyramids have steps right there are stepped pyramids um, in Egypt and uh, in the Mayan world, there were stepped pyramids, okay? And those steps allow people who want to get to the top of the pyramid, they allow them to, to get there more easily, okay? Because you can take one step at a time. And this is exactly what you wanna do in your paper as well. So you want to introduce key ideas and then discuss them in the order that you introduce them. 
So let's say um, in the first sentence of a paragraph, you can say you know that there are two key reasons why AI tools should be used in academia. Okay, so we know you know what you're going to discuss in that particular paragraph, and then you need to discuss those ideas um, in order. Okay, so it. To, to give a further example, it could be something like AI tools should be used in academia because they help you to speed up the process and make it more accurate. So then in that paragraph or section, first of all, you have to talk about speed because that's the first idea that you introduce. And then you have to talk about accuracy because that's the second idea that you introduce. So that's the stepping stones. Now, tip number three is what I call the pyramid apex. So again, you know, you want to continue with the image of the pyramid and we've got our inverted pyramid. So the pyramid apex is at the very bottom. Okay. And that's where everything is going. And the whole inverted pyramid balances on the apex. And if you get it wrong, the whole pyramid will just collapse. And if you know a little bit about um, the history of building pyramids, for example, in ancient Egypt, you will know that there, there, is, there is a pyramid that is actually crooked, that kind of goes like this and then goes like this. Because when they were building it initially, they just miscalculated where the apex should be. And then they had to change it halfway through because otherwise the pyramid would have collapsed and the pharaoh would have killed them. Um, and but obviously the pyramid looks really ugly now, right? Because it's kind of like this. And there, there are also examples of pyramids that collapsed because of that. And the same thing is going to happen to your paper. If you don't think about the pyramid apex, you know, and you change it halfway through, you will never tell a coherent story. Your paper will collapse. So in order to go to the pyramid apex, you have to constantly be asking yourself, so what? It's a very simple question, so what? But at the same time, it's quite profound because it, it forces you to think, what is the main idea here? What is the key takeaway message? What am I actually trying to tell the reader? Because all too often, um, especially in the literature review, but also in the discussion section of the paper, your paper ends up just being too descriptive. You just describe your results or you describe previous literature. But the question is, so what? What is the pyramid apex? So think about that pyramid apex and always try to take the reader in that direction. So that's um, tip number three. Now, if you want to get more tips like that, then I would encourage you to join our free published researcher community. And then if you head to the classroom tab, you will be able to um, find videos on structuring your papers. And it's completely free to join and you'll also get to hang out with over 500 other PhD students and researchers who want to become published researchers. And the link is right below. So uh, the fourth tip is to follow established order. So academic writing and research papers um, are very formulaic and there, there is an established order of things in most sections of most research papers in most disciplines. It's not like every discipline and every paper follows something a different order you know we're not talking about novels here or you know just literature there is a very specific order of things so to give you an example um, in the introduction as i've already mentioned right first you talk about the importance of the topic and define any key concepts then briefly review the literature identify the research gap and present the aim that's the established order if you do things out of that order well the reviewer will immediately go like well, hold on what's going on here i'm just confused why because the journal reviewer is used to that established order they they know the route and they expect a certain route they expect you to follow that route when you follow it the reviewer just feels like okay th this is actually making sense i can understand where this is going if you're not following it well then the reviewer is getting confused and thinks that there is no coherent story so that's um, tip number four now tip number five is to go step by step Okay, so again, if you think about the, the pyramid um, or the inverted pyramid, whichever way you want to go, of course, you could try to get to the top faster by jumping steps. But you, if you do that and slip, you can just fall down the pyramid and break your neck. And the same thing is going to happen in your paper. So what, what you want to do is discuss one idea in full before you move to the next idea. Take one step before you take the next. So let's say if you have three ideas in a given section, right? A, B, and C. What you need to do is just discuss idea A. So A, 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 
you finish it and then you go B, 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 and then you go idea C, C, C. What you don't want to do is just go like A, B, C, B, A, C. And you might think, well, I would never do that. But you'd be surprised how many PhD students and, and researchers actually do it. At Academic English Now, when I program published researcher, we, we read hundreds of papers every single month from our clients. And I can tell you with full confidence that a lot of researchers and PhD students break this order. They go, don't go step by step. They have an idea A and then go to idea B, come back to idea A and then all of a sudden introduce idea C. Don't do that. Discuss one idea, take one step, then move on to the next one and to the next one. That's how you tell a coherent story. And then the last idea, the last tip is to cement your steps. So, you know, your pyramid will be much stronger if you put some cement in between the blocks. And, and by that, I mean, for example, ending a paragraph, introducing the, the key idea of the following paragraph. So this immediately builds coherence. What you can also do is start a paragraph by connecting to the previous paragraph. So for example, you could start a paragraph by saying, you know, another issue that academic, academics face is right so just by saying another issue well we know that the previous paragraph discussed one issue or problem now we're going to discuss another and there is a clear connection and you want to be doing the same thing within paragraphs by using for example linking words like however moreover for example that kind of thing also by using the terminus so words like this that um, another um, and so on to, to link those ideas. You can also repeat key terms that have been used before to further tie your ideas together. Or you can use synonyms like issue, problem, challenge to again tie ideas together. So these are the six steps that you wanna be taking in order to tell a coherent story in your paper and publish it in better journals. And if you want more free advice like this to help you to write and publish papers, then definitely join our free published researcher community. The link is right below this video. And if you that kind of person who just wants to skip the free stuff entirely and get access to me, and my team will then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation. We're gonna get on a one-to-one -one call with you, identify your specific challenges, your specific needs, and then devise a plan of how we can work together to support you to publish three or more papers every single year in top journals. And the link to that free one-to-one -one consultation is below this video.